Hi, it's Tara Green and bringing you the astrology of January the 4th to the 10th. Big week ahead with three planets changing. Sign, Mars enters Taurus on the 6th and Mercury enters Aquarius on the 8th, followed by Venus entering Capricorn also on the 8th. So a lot of big change-ups. Uh, as planets also leave the last degrees of the signs, they're at their most potent. So you want to have a little heads up about that. So the Mer Virgo moon uh, poses Neptune early in the wee hours here. So practicality versus dreams, and they are both squaring the nodes of fate at 18 plus degrees. Gemini, North Node, Sagittarius, South Node. So, you know, accountability, dreams, projections, balancing things out. It's like a big balance sheet, a cosmic faded balance sheet. I know that uh, Bitcoin is on a lot of people's minds these days. Um, I am predicting there will be um, a, a crash coming actually in mid-February. Uh, the moon is making a earth trine there to Mercury and Pluto. So it's a good day to get very grounded, to reassess things, to get back down to the new year, just starting 2021. The moon squares Venus and Sag, so telling the truth, seeking out the truth, getting restless, getting kind of bored, uh, telling funny stories, that's all important today. And then the moon goes void, of course, at 4.34 p.m. That's Eastern Standard Time. And then Mercury conjuncts Pluto. So this is where you want to really be a fly on the wall of the big think tanks, the big power mongers, like what's really going on right now. Good time to meditate, to be grounded, to walk in nature, to watch what you eat. Every time the moon is in Virgo or planets are in Virgo, I find that my digestive system is very sensitive, which is the part of the body that Virgo rules. Don't you find that? So, you know, good to do a plant-based diet, simpler foods. Of course, if you're up here in the Northern Hemisphere where it's winter, uh, root vegetables, lots of soups and stews and hearty things to keep you warm. The Virgo moon then in conjuncts or quincunx is Mars and Aries late at night. And again, that's kind of fighting um, restlessness, anger, um, fighting words there, I would say. So you may be disagreeing with somebody at that time or some, unex oops, some unexpected uh, something's creeping up on you. You may have a kind of a feeling about it. Trust your gut instincts there. It won't be revealed till the next couple of days. And then the moon enters Libra, the sign of balance and harmony, relationships, wanting to be nice, peacekeepers, go-betweens, ambassadors, you know, fashion, beauty, all of that nice stuff, ruled by Venus. So on the 5th, uh, moon enters Libra on the 5th. Actually, that's an Eastern standard time there. And then the moon trines Saturn and Aquarius. So here's the moon in Libra. You know, we're in for very airy, heady, detached, higher consciousness time. So Aquarius energy wants to be free. And especially with Jupiter and Saturn there, relationships might be more open. There's a lot of relationships that are going to be changing in unique and unusual ways. And, and really it's about being very creative and speaking with a more detached tone, I would say, which might be, a, you know, nice for some people and not that nice for others. The moon also in uh, sorry, opposes Chiron and Aries there. So you might be feeling wounded by thinking that you're feeling too detached or, or too alone. You know, Libras always need to be with other people. So that, you know, it could be kind of angry or disagreeing with someone. Again, uh, Chiron and Aries has made everybody kind of edgy, vulnerable, you know, for the last year. Uh, and then the moon in conjuncts or quincunx is Uranus and Taurus again. So this is unexpected ups and downs. Uh, in your body, Taurus rules being embodied, very solid, and also rules the bull market. So again, expect some changes, quick changes, chaotic energy, again, things coming at us from the left field. Okay, the best thing we can do with all this Uranian Aquarian energy is to have plan B and C because it is always chaotic energy. Okay, unless you're a chaos, you know, theorist, I think most people find it hard to deal with it. Okay, so here we are now on the 6th. So on the 6th here, uh, Libra moon squares the sun. So we are in uh, moving towards the next lunar cycle. Uh, the moon and Libra in conjuncts Neptune and Pisces. Again, this is romantic dreams. I, I'm getting a lot of calls from people going, is this relationship over? A lot of people are so stressed out by the changes going on in the world that they can't decide what they want in relationships and that this is what you may be confronted with. So Neptune and Pisces always believes that people are going to do the best thing or believes what you want to believe. There's that symbol of projection there. And I guess this is also the day of that big march in Washington that Trump is having. So again, disagreements, clashes, um, coming up for sure. Now, Mars is at the very last degree of Aries, the sign it rules. So again, there's going to be a lot of tension to blow off 
uh, you know, Mars has been in Aries since like way back in September, I believe, and turned retrograde. So, you know, very long time with Mars in Aries. And now Mars is coming into Taurus, which is Venus's sign. So he's not strong in Taurus. Um, again, but the amping up of stubbornness and reality checks and values and money and people being angry about that and, you know, really that sensuality coming into play, really feeling that you're driven by your body's needs for basic needs, I would say. And, you know, a lot of people are struggling these days. So Mars enters Taurus, 527 p.m. That's at Eastern Standard Time. Might be a good idea to welcome the planet Mars into a new Earth sign with a Venusian kind of ritual, you know, have the goddess of love, Venus, show him around. Uh, you know, of course, she's still in Sagittarius where she's kind of adventurous and high-flying and, you know, has some humor there. And then the moon squares Pluto and Mercury. Uh, again, this is later in the day and in the evening. So again, power struggles, relationship issues, you know, trying to speak in a very concrete, grounded, practical way. And, you know, just finding new solutions is what squares are all about. You know, I always think that squares are like sand in the oysters. You have to make a pearl out of them. They're going to keep bugging you there until you do. And then the moon sextiles Venus and Sag, which is a nice aspect to go to sleep on. That's in Pacific Daylight, or Pacific Standard Time. And then we get on to Thursday here. Okay, so Thursday. Let's see if we can pull in a little bit there. Okay, so Thursday here. All right. Uh, Libra moon, again, squaring Mercury there. So difficulties with communication. So I've said those aspects already happened in Pacific time. A uh, little deja vu there. And the moon sextiles Venus and Sag. So you might connect with someone um, in another land. This is good for hooking up with people in different countries. It's good for learning new languages, learning anything online. Um, and sort of being upbeat and optimistic like Venus and Sag is. And then the moon enters the deepest, darkest, most intense, most emotionally transformative super wave of up and down Scorpio. Okay, so the moon in Scorpio until the ninth now. So again, uh, obsession, you know, that's the moon in Scorpio. So whatever's been in the background obsessing you comes to the foreground here, and that can be financial. Scorpio rules finances, um, rules big ups and downs. So expect major waves, tsunamis, um, power struggles going on. Uh, you know, this is intense, okay? Uh, now Venus is in Taurus, opposite the moon, and you can see the next aspect is that, the moon opposite Mars and Taurus. So uh, that stubbornness really raises its head. People will not back down, uh, believing in their values, you know, believing that could be things get violent at this point here with Mars and Taurus, um, with Scorpio moon here, because people will not just sit quietly and back down. Uh, the moon squares Saturn and Jupiter in Aquarius. So there is that sense of revolution and freedom, and it could be very violent. That's what I'm feeling. It could be a lot of violent protests in the U.S. Uh, the moon in conjunction with Chiron and Aries, again, feeling wounded, vulnerable, you know, like wounded animals can either play dead or they get very vicious, one or the other. The moon then opposes Uranus and Taurus again. So there's going to be some new radical um, retakes in the market and what our guts are telling us to do in values, a lot of up and downs, I'm feeling like in the world markets, uh, new advances in technology, new secrets coming out. This is also sexual secrets coming out into the open, uh, laundered money coming out into the open. There may be a lot of incredible surprises that people will not believe. Okay, now we get to the eighth here. Now, Mercury enters Aquarius early in the day there. So again, Mercury entering Jupiter and Saturn, you know, bringing our minds in harmony to the expansion of Jupiter and the restriction of Saturn. So again, everybody's thinking cryptocurrencies, everybody's thinking new technology, everybody's thinking about freedom, everybody's thinking about how to join together, everybody's thinking about mutual support and, you know, wanting to disrupt the system. Venus enters Capricorn. So Venus, the planet of values, money, women, relationships, enters Capricorn, which is a very serious sign. And so again, things are going to be restricted by the government here. It could be a pullback um, from the government, um, values, money, markets, upsets, a lot of restrictions here. I'm just feeling this is going to be very restrictive. Again, people being forced to lock down their hatches even more. Scorpio moon sextiles the sun at 11, 11 a.m. That's again, Eastern Standard Time, that magical number. So good for 
planning long-term goals, you know, going over financial goals, going over where you want to be in the next five years. Make that long-term plan. It's still in the beginning of the year and people are making New Year's resolutions, the moon trines Neptune and Pisces. So again, you could be hearing a lot of deception in the news. Um, again, false flags going on, um, false gurus. You don't know what to believe. You have to really learn to trust your gut instincts here and go past the fear. Fear is what people are being programmed to eat these days. Uh, the sun sextiles Neptune Pisces, again, very idealistic, good for meditation, visualization, building a dream, building a long-term dream here. Uh, really a good day to, to do that. It's 11-8. Those are kind of magic numbers as well. Scorpio moon sextiles Pluto and Capricorn. Again, this reiterates the depths of our own bones, our instincts, our ancestors, um, transforming any old sexual wounds, abuse, emotional, mental abuse uh, at this time. And then Mercury squares Mars. So again, factions arguing uh, different things going against each other. The moon is void, of course, there you can see on the 8th and then on the 9th. Well, it gets very uh, Sagittarius here. Moon enters Sag early in the morning uh, in conjuncts Mars there. So again, there's still people feeling rather belligerent, feeling put upon or search for truth and justice is, is going to be the forefront. People will be marching in the streets. Um, moon is Sag, Sextile, Mercury, and Aquarius, and, and Saturn Aquarius again. Uh, international business, uh, new liaisons, Venus trines Mars and Taurus. So that's a very nice, earthy, romantic, idealistic, but grounded. Make it real. Show your love. Make it real. This is a nice, you know, love relationships, hooking up with people, declaring your long-term love, um, giving expensive gifts to loved ones, or crafting something beautiful. Uh, buy yourself some flowers, you know, if you're alone. Do something nice for your body. The moon sextiles Jupiter, um, which is Sagittarius is ruler in Aquarius. So all during Aquarius time, the sign of Sagittarius is favored by this nice, lovely sextile. So it's easy for you to feel freer and see the higher perspective. Moon trines Chiron and Aries. So again, whatever wounds you've been feeling, you start to have a sense of humor and not taking it all so seriously. The moon in conjuncts Uranus and Taurus. Again, these battles of Uranus and Taurus is a, is a bit of a conundrum because Taurus doesn't like to move its stability. It's the stock market, it's the Taurus market, the bull market, and Uranus wants to, you know, again, big cosmic cattle prod wants to get things moving. So, again, the, the big picture vision and the slower dragging, not wanting to move forward energy is what's going on now. Mercury conjuncts Saturn. So that's, again, limitations on the internet. That could really mean limit, um, shutdowns in the internet or any kind of cryptocurrencies, things like that. So have your stuff backed up for sure. Moon squares Neptune and Pisces. That's on the 10th. That's the only aspect of the day. So take a little bit of a break. There's a lot of change-ups this week, a lot to digest. And we're only into the first week of 2021. So if you want to get in touch with me, I'm at tarotaro.com. Please subscribe to me here on YouTube. Follow me on my blog at infinitynow.wordpress.com. I'm on Twitter and I'm on Instagram. And pay attention to your dreams, especially when the moon's in Scorpio. Blessings.